thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search yeah. with Hey guys, um, this is the long overdue, everyone's been waiting for, um, uh, encounter story from uh, basically SoCal area, I uh, won't use real name, um, just going to have to, you know, go with the encounter story that was given to us, um, talk to this gentleman, um, We'll just go with the name of Jeff for now um, until we can get, uh, you know, the full uh, scoop on it. But I wanted to get the story out there because everyone's been waiting. As the story goes, uh, this gentleman was actually uh, in the uh, SoCal area, as, you know, we've kind of been saying all week. He's about uh, the area he went camping uh, was about 50 miles outside of uh, L.A., uh, which, you know, it's a huge, you know, obviously it's a huge metropolitan area, but there, it's kind of interesting. It's, you know, probably like many, uh, it's, as you start going north, you know, and there's small pockets in between uh, south, too, that uh, almost like islands of mountains, you could say, um, and as you go towards more north in the Santa Clarita range, there's actually, um, you know, a fair amount of uh, lower hills that eventually lead to the southern Sierras. Um, there's known sightings in the area, uh, kind of as you head up the five and as you head up, uh, again, the southern Sierras, the Tehachapi Range. Um, and as you get up towards Lake Isabella, which, again, leads uh, further on up to northern California, uh, which uh, can be, uh, you know, as we all know, extremely squatchy as well. But uh, down, down the southern, kind of, I guess that southern chain, you could say, as it follows it down, um, there's also sightings, even, uh, it's a little bit dated sightings in the desert area, um, which this almost is. It's really, uh, it does, most of the trees are oaks. Um, there's not a lot of pine in that particular area um, at that elevation where this gentleman had the encounter. Anyhow, he was uh, out there camping in his tent, uh, which was uh, at between basically uh, a lower lake area, uh, which was uh, normally fed, you know, non-drought pretty rapidly by a, a, a river, if you will, a stream. Uh, was dried out at the time, although now 2019, fast forward, there's been a lot of rain, so it's probably flowing again. But at the time, September uh, 2018 of his encounter, sleeping in his tent, and he all of a sudden heard footsteps, you know, footfalls, uh, coming basically uh, to the side of him, it sounded like, enough where he could open his ventilation flap. You know, a lot of the modern tents anyways have little ventilation flaps that you can open. Some are screened, some are not. It sounds like this one was not. Um, kind of took a peek out, uh, got a, basically, it sounded like about at least 10 second uh, uh, look at a squatch which he described uh, about nine feet tall. He didn't really give a gauge as to how he knew that, but uh, he's a pretty tall guy himself. You know, as we mentioned, he's uh, about uh, 6'2", 275 uh, weight, uh, so pretty good, good-sized guy, although being in the tent, not sure how much he was able to actually stand up, and, but he was probably kneeling, looking at this thing, um, and then about simultaneously, he got a rock throw from almost the same general direction, which he later confirmed he found the rocket. He said it bounced right off his tent, which, uh, you know, that that's a pretty amazing throw, even, you know, even for a human, you know, to be that accurate. And we know squatches can throw rocks like no other. We had 1130 at night. He said it was cloudy. Um, 
the lower lake area. He was kind of between the lower lake area and then there was a, a, a cave basically behind him. He said the cave was big enough to f uh, fit a one-bedroom apartment in, which was really interesting as well. Um, so he, anyhow, he essentially, um, you know, saw the first one, uh, took a quick glance away, and we know when that happens, normally, most of the time, Squatch takes that opportunity to exit the area or hide, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, he said he was uh, never, he was scared for his, he was just scared out of his mind at that point. Um you know, I related to him. I said it's possible you could have got hit with infrasound. You know, that's that's always a possibility. I didn't really know. He didn't really know what that was. He did know Bigfoot before this. He, he you know, uh, watched, you know, the typical finding Bigfoot, uh, things of that nature. Uh, was familiar with Bobo. I did mention that, you know, due to his light, large stature, they may have been, um, you know, kind of testing him, if, if you will, uh, seeing he what he was all about. Uh, he was alone in this campsite. Uh, anyhow, back to the encounter. So, yeah, uh, asked him, you know, did you see the fa any facial? He said it looked like a, basically a gorilla and a man. Um, uh, didn't really ask him any color of the face. Um, he didn't give a ton of detail there. I asked him if he saw the eyes. He said no, it was too dark. Uh, he described hair color as darkish uh, brown. Um, unlike a bear, longer uh, mats, he said. Uh, let's see what else. He um, also, again, described height. I asked him, is, was there any strange smell? And he said no. Um, and... It sounded like he was about 60 feet away, and did ask him if he went back to the area to see if there was any um, footprints the next morning. And fortunately, he said it rained and it washed everything out that would have been there. He said where he uh, estimated where the squatch was watching walking uh, was basically grass so he wasn't too sure how well that would come out as far as footprints uh, but it was very believable um, you could hear the fluctuations in his voice um, yeah and another thing that was kind of unusual you know the cave was interesting you know these uh, the squatch family there may have been more than two it sounded like maybe they were uh, traversing up to the cave and he was kind of in between everything um, they actually, there was a police helicopter in the area about the same time, he said. And he was uh, running this scenario through his own mind that possibly, um, you know, the squatches had come up from a lower area, possibly a um, more uh, populated area that somebody saw them and reported it and the police helicopter got involved. He claims he went to the police station the following day and actually asked them if there was any you know incidents involving the uh, police helicopter that type of thing and he claimed that the police said no there was not which you know if if they saw a squatch would they actually report it that way who knows uh, probably not I mean they like their jobs and they'd probably take heavy ridicule um, but so it's interesting he said uh, you know it was again a very short encounter probably no more than 30 seconds which is pretty normal um, got a you know a good size size estimation of it um, although not a ton of other details uh, it it really made sense in that regard so again this is 2018 sighting uh, you know uh, came to us uh, from Jeff in the SoCal area uh, you know the lower uh, Santa Clarita range, you know, is kind of hills and uh, that leads up to the Southern Sierras, which ranges, that ranges up to, oh, you know, five, uh, six, seven thousand feet. Uh, gets a heavy amount of snow later in the winter. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely believable. That area does have sighting. Uh, actually, up towards the five, there's 
there's been sightings, which is kind of interesting because it's such a heavily trafficked uh, uh, freeway. I mean, that's one of the main ar arteries uh, up and down the state. So who knows? They may have been using, uh, you know, there's probably a lot of game trails that uh, follow up to the higher elevations, things of that nature. They may have been, you know, Squatch may have been traversing across one of those, trying to follow game, uh, trying to get up to, you know, a different elevation. Uh, September, October are known for heavy Sasquatch activity as it is. But again, just wanted to get this story out. Hope everybody enjoys it. Please comment below. Um, and if you have not subscribed, uh, would love to have you on the channel. Everybody uh, have a great day and we'll talk to you next time. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help. If you do have an encounter to tell, send to SoCal Sasquatch Organization at gmail.com. We now have SCSO Keep On Squatching t-shirts available. See link in description below. Join the community and show it off wherever you go.